Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Zone Star State Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Ishmael Johnson. And Ish, today we are joined by the head coach of Rice Women's Basketball, Lindsay Edmonds. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, Ish and I have had a few coaches on now. Um, now we're trying to cover all the the top teams in the state, and coming off a 23 and nine season, 13 and seven in conference play, and um, I was looking up, obviously, doing the research for this podcast. It's uh, you have the most wins of any Rice women's basketball coach in their first two years. So I don't know if they, you know, give you a trophy or anything for that. But uh, still, a great first two seasons, and um, just overall, uh, just how how are you feeling going uh, in this off season? Yeah, uh, it's been it's been a great two years. Uh, it's been uh, a little bit of a roller coaster of emotions. Um, from first year to second year, uh, first year we finished most of the season having like seven or eight players available. So that was like such a challenge um, and not what I anticipated when I originally took the job. And so we had to get really, really creative our first year on like how to win games, how to practice. Uh, And then you go into uh, your second year uh, and you retained everybody, which was wonderful. And now you all of a sudden you have 16 players uh, on the bench. And while that's amazing, uh, it's completely different. Uh, and you have different questions and different problems and different concerns uh, in your second year than you do in your first year. So then you have to just like navigate through that all over again. Uh, but we were able to get off to an amazing start. Uh, we hit a few bumps along the road in the conference schedule that I was hoping we wouldn't hit, uh, but we did. Um, and But we figured out a way to, um, again, still win 23 games. Winning 23 games is is really, really hard. And so I'm, I'm proud of our efforts. Um, and this year, uh, off season has been tremendous. We've had an amazing summer. Uh, I really love the energy in our gym uh, every single day, the energy in our locker room every time we're together and meeting. Um, so I think everybody's just really energetic and really excited to, to get the season started. Uh, and I am as well. I think we, we have a very promising group. I think when, when you took over this job, you know, Rice was had a lot of pedigree and had a lot of prestige in the group of five. You know, how much pressure did you put on yourself initially in that first year and then heading into last year um, to kind of put your stamp on things, but also knowing that there was a pretty high standard already there? Yeah, for sure. I think there's a lot of people out there when you take take over a program and you're a first time head coach, they say go somewhere that's at the very bottom. Right. There's only up to go. And and that's easier. Uh, It's hard to maintain success. Um, So I took over a program that was extremely successful. They had won conference championships. They had won WNIT championships. Um, You know, they had had undefeated conference seasons. uh, And so. Uh, when I first took the job, I thought I had four starters coming back, um, but unfortunately, transfer portal hit me pretty hard despite my best efforts to try to keep everyone around. So where I originally took the job thinking we're going in to, to win a conference championship, um, I had to shift my mindset just to, all right, how do I get the most out of these 10 players that I have, none of which have played a ton except my one returning starter um and uh how do we have a winning season so it went from like just how do we it went from trying to like win for a championship to just like winning enough games to have a winning season uh which we did um and so there was a lot of pressure um on myself i put it on myself of people being like all people were going to say why why are why is rice losing why is rice losing they were just winning they were doing all these things they just won the wnit championship um and I had to just like block out all the noise uh, and just keep my head down uh, and grind and figure out ways to to continue to better our team every single day. Uh, and they balled in and they did whatever I asked um, and we put our stamp on things. And I think by like February of my first year, we were like really kind of rolling. We won nine out of our last 13 games. Uh, and then I think that just carried over uh, into my our second season. Uh, the play, I had all the same players the second year that I had my first year. Um, and, and that helped a ton. Uh, they knew what I expected. They knew what I wanted. Uh, we added in a really um, high recruited class um, of freshmen, uh, and they just came, came in and um, jumped right in and ended up – there was a lot of times I look up and I'd be like, oh, man, I have one senior in, two sophomores in, and two freshmen in. Like, what am I doing? But then we were winning games. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, mindset, mindset had to shift really quickly. Um my first year. And now it's just about like, how do we better our best, which is our theme um, for this year, bettering our best, 
Uh, last year was awesome, 23 and nine, but now we got to better that. We got to be better. We're going into a better conference. We got to compete harder every single day in practice so that we're ready for the American conference. Um, so all of that's a challenge uh, and it's exciting. Uh, and it's just every day you're navigating through something of how do we make this program better? Yeah, I, I wanted to look at last year. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned the start, starting off 9-0 and with wins over A&M, TCU, and the Houston double overtime game. Uh, what was that run like for you and obviously the team to, as those wins started stacking up and you could see you know, the, the momentum start to, to pick up as the season went on and then to get those big wins uh, that I mentioned? Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Obviously, when you put together a non-conference schedule, you want to challenge your team. Uh, You want to have some like a variety of games that you feel like are going to be really hard, but games that you know that you can win. And of course, as a coach, you want to win every single game. But did I go into the year last year thinking we were going to be nine and no in non-conference? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, we just kept finding ways to put ourselves in the ball game. Uh, and we were really tough and really resilient and found ways to win it. Uh, winning at Texas A&M was, was really special uh, because we won it on their floor. Uh, beating TCU uh, at home was like, a okay, uh, that, the A&M game wasn't a fluke. We're, we're really yeah. here uh, and we're really good. Uh, and then the double overtime thriller against Crosstown rival of, of Houston was – maybe the most entertaining game I've ever been a part of. And I've been a part of a lot of great games. And so that was, that was a lot of fun, um, really intense. Um, so I, again, I, I think our, our players just kept getting more and more confident. Like we belong here. We're supposed to win these games. We expect to win these games. Um, and we just, we just kept winning uh, and it was fun. And I tried to quickly, forget about the win and move on to the next one um, and have that mindset. Okay. Next one up, like what we just did doesn't matter. This next game matters. And you know, you don't want to drop after you like win those big games, you don't want to drop a game. You're supposed to, uh, to win quote unquote. So um, yeah, we just trying to keep their focus. uh, But they were, they did a great job. Like I said, we just, we hit some bumps uh, in conference that I didn't want us to, but uh, non-conference was a lot of fun. Uh, program history of nine and zero, so uh, that team goes down in the record books for sure. That that uh, sorry, just real quick. No, that, that Houston Rice uh, game was definitely what our game of the week that yeah. that week. Uh, Houston's defense, y'all's offense. That was a yeah. very uh, exciting to watch that game. It was for sure. So looking at before we get to some of the mm. the freshmen that got playing time last year, I do want to talk about some of the players who kind of under your watch kind of took a big step forward last year. You know, um, Malia Fisher, of course, was a freshman coming in to last year as a sophomore, uh, continued being really good. But Ashley Austin, you know, yeah. under your watch, what did you kind of see from her? Because, you know, kind of a bit player when she first came here and then your first year, she just kind of explodes into one of your go-to players. Um, Caitlin Crossweight as well, somebody uh, who – has, has continued to kind of find her groove. Um, you know, what have you seen from from her um, India Bellamy? I should mention as well. Um, yeah. Those those four players kind of took a huge step forward. But in particular, in my opinion, Ashley Austin kind of uh, the past couple of years has been one of you guys' best players. For sure. Yeah. Uh, so my first year uh, when I got here that summer, I saw mm-hmm. Ashley in the gym every single day, like every day. Uh, she was in the gym on the gun. She was walking around with a j- gallon of water. Like she was trying to get fit, trying to get in shape, trying to put up as many shots and uh, do as many workouts as she could. Uh, to She was just excited for a new opportunity and she wanted to make the most of it. Um, I really pride my staff on their skill development uh, and getting players better. Um, and so I think she bought into the work. Um, my staff really pushed her and challenged her um, to get better in certain areas. Um, and she just provided a, a mismatch for a lot of opponents. Um, mm-hmm. She was physical and um, tough enough that she could like play bully ball when she needed to and post up on the inside. But then she could also stretch you out uh, and shoot the three as well as do some things off the bounce. And so it, it was kind of fun putting her in different positions uh, to take advantage of defensive mismatches that we saw. Uh, so she's, again, really I'm happy for her. I'm happy that her last two years uh, she got to kind of flourish. She got to see how good she could be. She got to 
live a little bit in the the limelight uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, make all conference uh, and, and be someone that was on a scouting report, like, hey, we have to take Ashley Austin uh, away. So <clears throat> she worked really hard. Um, India Bellamy is another one. Uh, she really bought in, I feel like, and was a huge, huge asset to us this past year. Um, she was really good my first year as well, but like she took a whole nother level uh, this year. I feel like she was in the best shape of her life. Um, and she was a defensive presence for us and always a defensive presence. But this year she brought even more this past year. She brought even more of like her offensive scoring ability. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we saw how we could like pull her out and stretch her out. Not as much as Ashley, but we could stretch her to the free throw line or stretch her to the free, uh, the short corner. And she was really able to like live in those areas uh, and play really well. Uh, Caitlin Crossway, great shooter. Um, so with great players around her, it, it's hard to, um, it's hard for her not to get shots off because Ashley needs a double team. India needs a double team. Now we just got to find those open shots for Kate on uh, kickouts. Kate is one of the most fierce, toughest competitors. We'll do like whatever it takes to, to win. There was games last year um, that I was like, hey, I need you to play the point. And she was like, okay, I got it. And she did play the point. And she probably played 37 minutes uh, after having two knee scopes uh, in the two years that I've been here. And and so she's extremely tough, and um, we needed that. Uh, and then Amelia Fisher is phenomenal. I mean, she just doesn't have any idea of how good she is. I still think her ceiling is extremely high. Um, you can do things with her and she does things in a game that if you try to do it in a workout with her, she couldn't do it. But when she's not thinking about it and she's just out there playing, she is just so God given talent and athleticism and can just do so many different things. So she's really special. It's been awesome to see her blossom. Um, she's really worked hard this year to grow her game even more. Um, and you're going to, you guys are going to see there's uh, a lot of different pieces to her game this year that she didn't have last year. And so it's going to make her even harder to guard. Um, and then for me, I also destiny Jackson is another one that under, um, you know, my staff, we've really poured confidence into her, um, and really believed in her. Um, and she is, she's a huge reason why we won the Houston game. Maybe the reason why we won the Houston game, uh, because of her impressive performance, but she sets the tone for us. Um, she's our cap. She's one of our captains. Uh, she received 15 out of 15 votes to be a captain. Um, and so everybody looks at her. She sets the tone with our practice. She sets the tone with games, her pace, her tempo, her speed, her endurance, like you want everybody going uh, at DJ speed, um, but she has just gotten better and better um, each year and really excited about her last season uh, with us this year as well. Do you have an example of, uh, of Malia? Cause you mentioned Malia Fisher kind of like in something in practice or something she'll do in a game that she probably can't mimic in practice. You know, in my opinion, when I see her, I see like very little wasted movement on mm-hmm. like whenever she's going to the, going to the basket or, or scoring, she's one of the more efficient scorers I've seen. Do you have an example of like something that's like, She's like, oh, she that it just came to her in a game. And then, like you mentioned, couldn't necessarily be replicated in practice. Yeah. I mean, like if you put her through like some like ball, like do a couple like ball handling drills and then like go do the spin and then go finish at the rim. Like it would right. not look like fluid. And uh, right. it was, she's thinking about it. But in the game, she's just going to go and do whatever she needs to do in order to get to the rim and score. And so now she's going between her legs and then behind the back and then spinning and she's mm. finishing in front of the rim. And it looks like she's a pro uh, out right. there. So uh, just again, sh- when she's thinking about things, she overthinks uh, in practice uh, and work out sometimes. And in the game, she just does it. Now, uh, obviously along with Malia Fisher and destiny Jackson, uh, you have Trinity Gooding coming back, uh, Jazzy Owen uh, Bar- Barnett coming back uh, as, as a group. And obviously there's, there's more, but uh, as a group, what does that core just bring to this team and uh, how do they start building an identity? Cause obviously after losing Austin and cross the way, you know, building their own identity for what this team could be this year. Yeah. What, what I love about our core group from this year is, is mostly everybody played last year, right? Like mm-hmm. Jazzy found her way into the rotation. Uh, Dominique Ennis uh, started, yes. she was yes. starting right. Trinity Gooden has been in the rotation uh, for two years. Like, so, uh, Maya Bukanevich would have played if she wouldn't have hurt, got hurt the second uh, game of the season. She was killing before she got hurt. Uh, and so now she's like back in the rotation too. So I think there's just a lot of pieces that 
um, they kind of got their feet wet last year, but now they're okay. Now I'm going to step into a bigger role. Uh, and I think they're ready for that because of being able to play in those moments, you know, Jazzy and Dom and, um, Shelby, they played in the BYU, uh, WNIT game, you know, um, they played uh, against Texas A&M. They played against TCU. They played against Houston. They played against Middle Tennessee. You know, so they, they've played in some big games, uh, and it's not just they got in the games that were we were blowing people out or, you know, we were losing and they got in at the end. They were in the mix. Um, and so I, I think they're they're ready for that next step. Um, you know, we, we may look different without Ashley out there, without Caitlin out there, without India out there. Um, but – uh, we're going to figure it out. We're going to find our identity. We're going to find our rhythm. Um, and I'm excited uh, to do that with this group because they're so eager to do whatever it takes uh, to be that team that is tough and gritty and, and does whatever it takes to win. Uh, for for me, I, I watched um, past couple of years. I saw Shelby and, and Jazzy in, in high school. You know, how valuable was it for them to come from teams that had had a lot of success? You know, I think Shelby went back to back at state championships. Mm-hmm. Um, Jazzy, I think, made it to two. I know, she, I know she won one. But, like, how valuable was it to add key players from, like, state championship teams to, to your program pretty early? For sure, yeah. I, I mentioned that in my write-up on, on some of those kids. Like, uh, Kennedy Clifton is playing on Team Takeover, who wins Nike EYBL, you know. So that that's mm-hmm. a big deal. Like, you you know how to win at a high level. Uh, Jazzy and, and Shelby being on teams that won state championships, they know how to win. They know how to play in crucial moments. They know how to uh, play hard and push through the fatigue when the game is on the line because there's something bigger uh, at mm-hmm. the end of it. And, and so I, I definitely mentioned that uh, we had some winners uh, come in, in that group. Uh, and I think that's kind of contagious, right? Like they came in, they come in like I expect to win because I've, I've never lost before. I don't know what losing looks like and I don't want to start now. And so that that eagerness, that um, competitiveness, that toughness uh, becomes contagious. And even if you didn't come from a team that won a state championship or EYBL championship, um, you want to mimic those people that that have those qualities. Uh, and it just you see it like go through your entire locker room. So that was a big piece. Uh, and we love those attributes about those three for sure. From the transfer portal, we're able to add – you know the last names of both players. Uh, I, I will struggle with. So I'll let you uh, uh, help me there. But uh, Emily and uh, Sussy, um, Susie. Susie, thank you. Mm-hmm. Emily from UAB shot forty one percent from three last year. Susie, uh, six foot three, post player from Stanford. Um, what have you seen from those two? Obviously, Emily kind of shuffles in as a shooter uh, mm-hmm. for y'all, and then Susie has six three. It's always nice to have uh, some posts. Just what do those two add to y- y'all's team? Yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, they're incredible human beings. Um, they have been just such a, a warm um, personality added in, into our locker room. Uh, the players quickly gravitated to them and they quickly like made themselves uh, as a part of the team. It wasn't like, oh, they're just the transfers. Mm-hmm. Um and they're just they've been phenomenal their energy has been amazing uh emily is like you said a shooter but she can do more than that she's pretty she's pretty fast off the bounce as well so being able to get to the rim uh and getting to her pulls or or something that she's very good at we're really excited uh about emily uh and susie again like you mentioned six three uh you always want to add size <clears throat> at the post position as great as ashley and india were they were both very undersized uh for their like the five Mm -hmm. position. And so having uh, Susie at her size for two at her size, Shelby at her size is, is just tremendous. But um, Susie does a tremendous job of just like ceiling for angle, like ceiling for angles and just like drop steps. Like she doesn't need a ton of moves to score. Um, She's really efficient. She doesn't use her dribble a lot, which I love. Um, so I'm really excited to to see what she does on this level. Uh, but she is definitely uh, a presence uh, inside the paint for sure, for sure, for us. <clears throat> yeah, I watched uh, the Iowa Post player score with no dribbles throughout the entire NCAA tournament. So I started oh, questioning how why why even dribble at this right. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Susie and I just had our one on one meeting, and we talked about uh, the Post player from uh, Iowa, and that's why one of her favorite players, and she watches her a lot on film. <clears throat> so she definitely tries to mimic uh, some of her game. Yeah. yeah. Ch- uh, Chinano, I think that was. Chinano. Chinano, yeah. Thank you. There yeah. it is. Um, so I guess for me, you know, when you look at the AAC, 
you know, you go into a new conference. Some of it's familiar, right? UTSA, <clears throat> UNC, even Houston, you guys have played. But, you know, what are you kind of seeing from the rest as you're, I don't know how much deep diving you've done or how much you just kind of know off the top of your head. Um, what are you kind of seeing from the conference as a whole? Yeah, it's exciting. Um, I don't know a ton about um, all of the opponents. I've obviously, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with South Florida. When I was at my previous place, we played them several times. <clears throat> I'm pretty familiar with East Carolina. Um, again, I was from North Carolina, so I'm familiar with what that looks mm -hmm. like. Um, I've played Tulane several times when I was at NC State as an assistant. Um, I've seen like Tulsa on film. I've seen SMU on film. Um, <clears throat> I have obviously the ones that we're going in with. I I'm familiar with them as well. But uh, overall, I think it's a, a deeper conference uh, than what we were just in with Conference USA. Uh, the teams are, are very good, uh, very athletic. Um, and so I think that's going to be something that we're going to have to get used to pretty quickly of just the athleticism uh, and the size and the speed of the game. Um, but we'll definitely start deep diving um, probably in the next month or so for our opponent scouting, but haven't started that quite yet. Um, not ready to get in that mode uh, yet, but um, yeah, uh, South Florida is dominant. Uh, and then East Carolina won it last year. Um, it was really, really impressive. Kim and I have known each other for a really long time. Uh, for her to be picked 14th uh, and then win the conference championship and be in the NCAA tournament is just phenomenal. So uh, she has most of her team coming back. So I know they'll be very, very dangerous. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited for every opportunity, um, whether I'm familiar with them or I have to get familiar with them. Um, I'm excited about the new opportunity, the new cities, the new gyms, um, and just being in a more prestigious league uh, that's going to have more visibility uh, for our student athletes, uh, I think is a really big deal. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the, the non-conference schedule uh, you put together, once again, it looks like it'll, it'll challenge y'all quite a bit. <laughs> so uh, are you looking forward to, to that? Especially, uh, obviously for us, we love all the Texas games y'all have between yeah. SU, SFA, Texas Southern, Corpus Christi is always good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you like how the schedule came out for y'all? I do. Uh, I do. It's it's exciting. Uh, there's some exciting opponents on there. There's some names on there that will get our fans excited, too. Um, there's going to be some challenges on there. Um, but between, you know, Power Fives and NCAA tournament appearance teams and WNIT appearance teams and conference champion teams, um, there's, a, there's a lot of teams on there that have won a lot of games last year. And so, we got to be ready. Uh, we got to be ready every single night. I don't want to overlook any one opponent and just name a few, but there's there's a lot of exciting teams uh, on there, um, and we're going to get challenged, uh, and we're going to see where we stack up, and uh, hopefully it'll get us prepared for the American, and um, we'll be ready for the American and, and not hit the skid that we hit this year when we got to a uh, conference. So hopefully we can learn uh, from that piece this year as well. Sure. Anything else, Ish? No, that's it. I mean, we're, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a little bit of a different looking team, but you know, you guys were one of our most exciting teams to watch last year. So I'm awesome. excited to see your three under you. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you guys for, for having me and asking questions about Rice University and Rice women's basketball. Um, it's always good to continue to uh, talk about your programs and get it out there where people can hear about you. Yes. Thanks well, so much for coming for on. Us. Uh, We'll uh, see if we'll get you on uh, next year, even, you know, after the year, uh, this year. We'll see. see yeah, how it for goes. sure. I'd love to. Anytime, just reach out to Anthony and he'll get it lined up. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Thank Appreciate you. It, coach. Have a great day. You too.